it's good that you're here this week because you because last week it was Doug and I at the movies, mm -hmm. but this time you got to get the same experience because we were stuck in the front row last week too. <laughs> I gotta remember to start buying these in advance more. Right, right. I'm so used to the past year being in the theater and being the only one there. I know. And what's hilarious is you texted me today. You're like, oh shit, you better buy your ticket too. We may not be able to sit together, but I lucked out. I found one right yeah, next to you and it, in the front friggin' row. <laughs> it was better at this than that because we were at the Studio Movie Grill last week. This at least had like the recliners. Oh, okay. So it's like yeah. not, as bad, not, yeah. not quite as bad. There was when I got the tickets earlier, there was, I don't know if it was still the case when you got it, because I texted you right after I got mine, and there was one in the very back Ugh. that was open, and I was like, uh, I was like, I'll go ahead and leave that one for Jared. Because I was like, yeah, because I didn't want to be like, we show up, and I'm like, I'm like well, I'm going to be back there. Like, where's mine? Front, bro. <laughs> Bye. See ya. Let me know how that goes. <laughs> so I figured you would have snagged the one in the back. And uh, well, and that's why I asked you where yours was. Oh, was so yeah. that I could like. So you could make sure we weren't sitting together. <laughs> <laughs> when I was, I was like, because you got here after I did. The movie'd been on for like five minutes or yeah. something. And I just I thought maybe you were actually here, like just in the back, just in the back or something. And then you came in and I, and you go, fill me in on what I missed. And I'm like, you missed them doing the Exorcist for five minutes. <laughs> we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, so have you seen the other two movies? I want to say I saw the first one, but yeah. I, I can't remember. Because these are these are anthology movies, aren't they? I mean, the whole U Conjuring universe is, but then there's the Conjuring movies that are about the two Warrens, um, and then you also have the Annabelle movies and the Nun and yeah. Curse of La Llorona. Okay, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Maybe I'm not. <laughs> but no, I really love the first two Conjuring movies. This one that was all right. Yeah. <laughs> It was better than the unholy. Exactly. <laughs> Remember the the one with uh, uh 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 oh man, I am really tired today. <laughs> Jeffrey Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Oh oh yeah that yeah one. yeah yeah yeah. It, yeah, I can agree with that. I can agree with that. So what you missed in the, the movie? I didn't think this was a bad movie. No, me um, neither. But it was the movie was a lot of things that are were done better in a lot of other movies and in a lot of other Conjuring movies. Exactly. And in the other Conjuring movies. There wasn't really much in this that stood out or really... It didn't really feel like there was necessarily anything fresh to this one. Yeah. To, and, and if it, and if it's going to do make similar beats, fine, I get that. But it doesn't really even kind of match the first two movies. Yeah. I didn't think it was a bad movie. It, it, there was something... Vi the first two movies were really good at certainly having a lot of scope to them. Yeah. This one kind of feels like you're watching a procedural on network television. Do you know, I, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, this whole, uh, while watching this movie, all I could think of is this feels like an episode of the X-Files. Oh, sure. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. Um, and there, there is some like, because uh, I saw the pilot of it, was called Evil or something like that. That is a show about like it's like the X Files meets Demon Possession. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, 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 it is also. It was one of those movies that was just reminding me of a lot of better things. Yeah. Sometimes the movie is purposefully doing that. Yeah. So in the first five minutes of it, where it's the little kid who's possessed, you miss the shot where they just straight up do the shot from The Exorcist with The Exorcist showing up to the house and getting in the cab oh and it's God. the same camera angle. <laughs> I'm like... Okay, well, we're off to a great start I'm now. Like, it's not that I'm against homage. Uh, I'm not. But sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. In this, I was like, oh, c come on, movie. Right. Like, like, first of all, this early into the film right. where it's like the opening scene and... 
nothing in the movie even matches anything you're gonna see in <laughs> The Exorcist. Even so, with this being about a guy who kills somebody and while being possessed mm -hmm. and they're trying they're investigating whether this has anything to do with demon possession before the guy goes to trial so then factoring in uh, not that there's a lot of courtroom stuff in the movie but factoring in this murder trial into a movie like demon possession even with that a movie like exorcism of emily rose is better than this yeah amityville 2 the possession is yeah. awesome i yeah. love that damn movie <laughs> That I enjoyed better. And, I, and I'm movie. glad you said that, too, because with, with the whole, like, um, Satanist uh, angle of this plot, I kept thinking to myself, they did this better than anything for Jackson. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. That was one of the better movies of its kind I've, I've seen in a while. Yeah. Um, anything for Jackson. There was things I thought the movie did well. Um, there were a couple of cool shots in the movie yeah. uh, towards the end where she's seeing that kind of mimic ghost crawling after yeah. her. The murder scene I thought was well done yeah. where it's playing Call Me by Blondie along with it. That, yeah, yeah. that I thought was, was well shot. It's from the director of Curse of La Llorona. Which is probably the worst of the Conjuring Universe movies. Oh, really? Dude, it didn't even advertise itself as being a Conjuring Universe movie. I go see it, and then suddenly Annabelle is in it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this movie was better than that. But it doesn't match the direction James Wan did in, in the first two movies. It, it really doesn't. I totally like I really am tired. I don't know why I looked at the camera and said that, because I'm totally going to cut this part out. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I do like these characters. Yeah. I love Patrick Wilson in this. I love Vera Farmiga in this. Yeah, I yeah. love their chemistry. Yeah. So even though this is a lesser conjuring movie, it's like you're watching a lesser episode of a procedural you like where yeah. you'll still like the characters in it because you're invested in the characters. Yeah, yeah. And in this there there was that. Their chemistry is good. Yeah. There's sweet moments between the two mm -hmm. of them. And there was <laughs> I guess there was a beat that it, that uh, uh, you miss by not seeing the opening. Remember when they did the flashback in the movie? And to you the leave... gazebo? Yeah, where it shows that the Warrens met in Stars Hollow on Gil Gilmore Girls. <laughs> <laughs> it's in that universe, too. Um, when... Uh, uh, because you thought it was taking place in the present. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I go in, and uh, they're talking... So she's... Uh, telling the story about how they met and their first date and a uh, gazebo and everything. And, and I'm noticing how the scenery was very 1950, uh, 1950s. And she goes, that was 30 years ago. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> That would have been in the 90s. <laughs> so I turned to Brad and I'm like, wait a second. He goes, he goes, 1981. It's oh. A, this is taking place okay. in 81. I yeah. guess I should have told you that from the opening scene. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Got it. Okay. If I didn't know that, that would have been. It's like the remake of Nightmare on Elm Street that's taking place in the present. But when it flashes back to the kids, they look, they're dressed like they're from the 50s. <laughs> Although if it is Stars Hollow, you could kind of maybe there's like it's like a theme they're doing on the weekend where it's like fifties night or something. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's while I like those two characters and while there were uh, little individual things here and there that kind of worked, it, it, it's got some corniness to it, man. Yeah. So, sometimes the editing doesn't really work. And also, like, I liked it when they were playing Blondie yeah. in the murder scene. It was a little awkward when the guy in the... <laughs> Sit up and starts reciting and the starts words. reciting it like it's supposed to be scary. <laughs> like... Like, what? <laughs> this just sounds like you're doing a spoken word poetry album to the tune of Blondie. Like, there's a guy in the jail or mental ward, wherever the guy is, and he's sitting there. He, he sits up and, like, serious and scary, like, starts reciting Blondie. <laughs> I'm like, if you want to do that, do Rapture, man. Right, right, right. <laughs> and there's, when it gets to the climax, where, like love factors into it that was a little much yeah that was a little corny yeah. that was it a was little very tv corny. movie yeah. <laughs> like 
so, but again, there were things that carried it. Yeah. The two performances. Mm -hmm. um, individual little things here that, that, that would get kind of a jump out of me. Because it doesn't go overboard with the jump scares in it. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't do them as well as the other two movies did. But it doesn't do it as bad and and just without any rhyme or reason as some of the lesser demon, demon possession movies. I will think. say that this movie does tend to like like I think this movie will irritate some audiences. Sure. Some uh some people that maybe um rat lovers. I mean I I, I'm I'm an apologist for rats. I love rats. Rats are adorable, and and this movie tends to uh, really try to get you to think rats are creepy or rats are uh, rats are scary, you know. And I just should have the Michael Jackson song playing over it. Ben <laughs> about the rat, yeah. Um, movie about a boy and his best friend who's a rat. I didn't I didn't mind the rat propaganda. <laughs> Like, because, okay, like, I, I, I'm with you. I love rats. I yeah. do. Rats are cool. But if I am crawling in a crawl space yeah. and one is there, I'm going to keep my distance. <laughs> it might startle well, me a yeah, little bit. Yeah, yeah. Like, it might not, not because I have any kind of fear of them or anything like that, but it's like, okay, strange rat in a crawl space. I'm going to. Obviously, yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, wild rats might still have rabies. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you definitely want to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I'm with you. And in the one he, fi oh. he finds one in the cereal yeah. later. I mean, granted, I know that toys and cereal were a little dangerous in the eighties, <laughs> but but I don't know if anyone wants to find a rat in their box of tricks. Oh uh, boy! Uh, unless it's the tricks rabbit who put it in there to finally get those damn kids back. Um, I mean everything else about. You saying about the uh, the case that they're working on and things like that? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all the the movie is from beginning to end just kind of standard stuff that you see in a movie yeah. like this. It's kind yeah. of going beat for beat. There's things I've seen do it worse, but when you've had two movies before it that have done this way better, and then to see this just kind of by the numbers movie yeah. by the end of it, it's like I don't really even know why I'm here. Here. Right. Like this is making leaving very little impact on me. It, it it's cool that they're still doing these movies because I like these characters. But to just kind of see this, not that it's not trying, but it seems to just be going by a playbook and not really doing anything to rise yeah. above what you're expecting to see in this. But if this answers your criticism too, it does say based on a true story at the beginning. So all this shit happened. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're <laughs> they even they even showed the file footage uh, uh, during the credits. At the end, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, okay. I, I will say this, like, with the true story thing, where it's like, yeah, okay, fine, sure, why not? Um, even the. <laughs> It's not like I'm sitting there going, whoa, this shit happened. But when I do see a movie like this, whether it's good or bad or just mediocre like this film, I will say, like, it's, it does its job in the sense that I am going to go home and, like, probably read the Wikipedia article yeah, yeah. on this case. Yeah, I, I might actually do some right. research on, on this yeah. case. I might... And I'll sit there and be like, hey, that stuff in the movie didn't happen. <laughs> I know people get bothered by that kind of thing with these kind of movies. Uh, than me, I, it, it didn't really bother me. Like, right? I mean, the studio is definitely going to take some uh, take some creative liberties. Oh, far. I <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it, all I want is a good movie out of it. Yeah, really. yeah, it, yeah. It's like I know the shit in Amityville Horror didn't happen, but I still love the Amityville Horror. Right, right. <laughs> so I don't know. It it, it it just kind of is in one ear and out the other, really. Sure. Oh, it, aside from the ghost of fat bastard chasing them around. Oh no, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was weird. That was quite weird. Like. Yeah. I'm like, this is, is this, okay. Is this a comedy? I mean, there were a couple genuinely funny parts in it where the defense attorney was meeting with the woman. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, we think this is demon possession. She's like, I can't get up there and say like, oh, not guilty by reason of demon possession. They're like, all right, look, you just come over to our house. We'll show you some things. We'll show you Annabelle. 
and you know afterwards if you want us to piss off we will <laughs> the cut, the cut there was pretty funny where right. it does it doesn't show her going to their house it just immediately cuts to like the next day in court and she's sitting there like shaking like, yeah. ooh, ooh. <laughs> like what happened there <laughs> Did they lock her in there with Anna? With Annabelle? Uh, so I'll be honest. Um, I, I'm going to admit right now that uh, until you said that, like all all these movies are linked into this universe, I didn't know that. I I didn't. Oh know yeah, because um, Annabelle was first in The Conjuring, the first mm. one. Then they did her movie. The first Annabelle wasn't movie wasn't very good, but the sequels were good mm. or prequels, whatever. They were good, and you see, I think in the last Annabelle movie, I think Vera Farmiga might have been in it for a scene. Yeah, she did. She she was she was. Who was in that the one. villain? I don't know, but that person was pretty good. Yeah, I'll give it this. The yeah. movie does have the movie does have kind of a standout villain. Yeah, I will give it that about the movie. It's it's not a. Stock I, demon character. I wouldn't that's mind seeing more about uh, seeing more with this uh, with this uh, villain woman. She was yeah. She was really cool. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I agree. I was thinking that <laughs> when I was watching, and I yeah. go, everything about this movie is totally standard, except the villain really yeah. stood out. And normally, when you see something average or below average in this genre, it's just kind of a stock ghost that's in mm -hmm. there or something. Even in a lot of the better ones, that'll usually be kind of the case. Even, hell, the Conjuring universe has like gave a whole movie to the nun, which <laughs> this villain is stand to me stands out way more in terms of writing in terms yeah. of character. The the nun's a striking image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not much there beyond that. Um, that that movie wasn't that great, but it was a good looking movie. But mm -hmm. uh, here, yeah, I, I agree with you. I. That was one of the better things about the movie. I wish it was in a better Conjuring movie than yes. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where do you fall on a grade for this one? Um, <laughs> it's, it's one of those where the more average the movie, the more <laughs> you go I'm, like this. I'm like, I'm like B minus C, um, B minus, B minus. Yeah, uh, you're. I, I was thinking the same thing when I was watching this movie. When it was getting to the last act, I was veering back and forth between C plus and B minus. And as much as there's little things in the movie I liked, as much as I like these two leads, as much as I like these characters, if I were to give it a B minus, it would be for that. But I can't. I think it's it, I think it's totally worth a rental or watching it on streaming. Really, not not theaters. Not really, especially because it is on HBO Max this week. Oh, okay. So you're better off watching it there. And I'm like, I'll go ahead and give it a C plus. Uh, so yeah, I'm going in the C plus camp because it, it it definitely doesn't hold a candle to the previous two mm. in terms of its scope, its ambition, its directing, its plot, things in it that make it stand out. Aside from the villain, I'm I, like, I'm, I'm going to C plus on this. Okay, I I, I actually wasn't uh, sure uh, if C also got the plus or the minus. So whenever I was like B minus C, I, I really meant B minus or C plus. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. so mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, that's better than like they could B minus or a D. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that, that's a quite a jump. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, uh, B minus or a D. <laughs> it's like, well, the movie's good, but the credit music was really shitty. <laughs> that might bump it down to a D. Oh, well, speaking of speaking of music, though, with this movie, I go little. There were little things in it that reminded me of things we've seen recently. One of which being, which I know this isn't the fault of the movie, but one of which being like. This isn't even the best... Well, maybe maybe you disagree, but I go like, this isn't even the best movie I've seen in the past 30 days that has Suspicious Minds by Elvis on the soundtrack. <laughs> they played that a couple of times in Army of the Dead. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I like that one better than you did. 
Yeah. So maybe I, I maybe this I, is the suspicious minds but I, you prefer. But no, I was going to say, uh, you liked it more than I did, but I still liked Army of the Dead better than this. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, th that was the better Elvis Presley suspicious minds movie that's playing <laughs> in theaters right now. <laughs> Well, I think this is really all we got this weekend. Really? Uh, yeah, next week is, uh, I think Peter Rabbit 2 is next week. Oh my god. The Hitman's Wife's Ooh, that's Bodyguard. Gonna be look, that looks good, that looks good. Yeah, yeah, that's coming, excuse me, that's coming next weekend. But, uh, and then will, in two weeks, Fast 9, bro! Woo! <laughs> I will definitely have to get tickets early for that. And apparently anything I go see right now, I'll have to get tickets early for. I will write it on my hand right now. Make sure not stuck in front row. At least me. Jared, it's okay. <laughs> it's... <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Take care.